Yo, what's up guys? It's Master Saiyan here and welcome back to another Pokemon Go video and within today's video what I do for you guys is the 10 hidden Pokemon Go tips and secrets that nobody talks about and a lot of these tips and secrets I know a lot of you guys might not know about so if you can stick to the end of the video that would be much appreciated and I know that you will actually learn something new from watching this video. But before we do get into it, what I do want to say is I am still giving away this level 33 account. Now the giveaway does have 3 days left to go, so to get yourself entered in, all you guys will need to do is leave a like on the video, leave a comment as well as subscribe, and also after I do have this giveaway finished in 3 days, I will be doing more in the future, so if you are watching 3 days late, be sure to subscribe because I will be doing additional account giveaways in the future. And also if you guys were interested in getting some Poke coins within Pokemon Go, be sure to check out free my apps and use my code on screen to actually get yourself some extra Poke coins. Then while you're on their app, pretty much you'll just be needing to download a few other applications and you can get yourself some points to actually get an iTunes or a Google Play card to redeem yourself some Poke coins to buy some incense or lucky eggs. But with all that out of the way, why don't we just get directly into it? So today guys we'll be going through 10 hidden tips that not a lot of you guys might not actually know about and starting this one off we will just be going into the first tip which is basically going to be to turn off AR to make capturing easier. Now I know all of you guys do know this tip but I just wanted to get this one out there. Now capturing Pokemon with AR is really fun. But the thing is, when you actually do have AR Moon activated, it is a lot harder to actually capture Pokemon as it'll just move around a lot more and just scatter around. And it's just a lot easier to actually catch Pokemon with AR Mode actually off. So if you guys were struggling at catching Pokemon, be sure to turn that AR Mode off. Within the next tip, I will be explaining CP and how it actually works. So CP is basically combat power and it is above each wild Pokemon. Now what a lot of you guys might not actually know about combat power is there is actually an individual dot in the stats screen and you'll see a little semicircle at the top. In an individual Pokemon's stats screen, you'll see a semicircle at the top. The part that's bold with a dot at the end indicates that Pokemon's current maximum combat point potential and some Pokemon do have higher maximum combat point potential than others. And that is just a really quick uh, secret tip that can help you with deciding to evolve one of your Pokemon or powering them up. Now a really good tip about egg hatching is it's a really good idea to not hatch 2 kilometer eggs because those eggs really do have low level Pokemon which are pretty bad. So your best idea is to actually go and try and hatch some 5 kilometer eggs or if you have a 10 kilometer one to hatch that. And another secret that a lot of people have found out about hatching eggs, you can actually put your phone at the top of a ceiling fan and turn on your fan. And while it is uh, turned on and running at a slow speed, the egg traveling meter will actually go up while your phone is actually on your ceiling fan. And it is actually a really easy method to actually hatch eggs if you don't want to actually go outside and walk. Now a really quick tip to actually gain a lot of XP faster is to actually go on ahead and capture as many low level Pokemon as you can. So pretty much pay attention to the amount of low level Pokemon that you have and their candy required to evolve and after you do have a whole bunch of low level Pokemon like Weedles and Caterpies, Pidgeys even, and you do have a lot of candy for them, then what you can actually do is use a lucky egg and evolve all of them at the same time and you'll actually be gaining double the XP. Now using Pidgeys is very good to do with this because it does actually require less candies to evolve and using a lucky egg and doing like a huge low level Pokemon evolve spray will get you a ton of experience and you'll basically be able to level up a little bit. Now the amount of XP that you do get from evolving low level Pokemon compared to like high CP Pokemon is actually identical so I will be going through some XP that you can gain for each action that a lot of you guys might not know about. Obviously when you do capture a Pokemon you get 100 XP, uh, 10 extra XP for a nice throw and you do get an extra 10 XP for a curveball and if you do actually manage to hatch a 2 kilometer egg you do get 200 XP, 500 for a 5 kilometer egg and a thousand for a 10 kilometer egg and for evolving a Pokemon you do get 500 XP as well as registering a new Pokemon into your Pokedex. So if you can actually use a lucky egg and evolve like 20 Pokemon you can actually get like 10,000 XP really quick and if you are in like an area where you can actually 
catch a whole bunch of new Pokemon that can actually get you a lot of XP as well. Now a secret trick that not many of you guys might not know is actually an incense trick. Now incense covers your trainer in a pink fluffy fragrance that attracts wild Pokemon to your location for 30 minutes but you can't just sit there and actually wait for those Pokemon because if you're waiting for them you'll actually find one Pokemon every five minutes which isn't very good but if you actually do take a walk and you do have your incense ready you can actually find one Pokemon every 200 meters so it is probably a good idea to activate your incense and then go on ahead and have a run and catch some Pokemon rather than sitting at home and waiting every five minutes with an incense as it is just a lot more effective to travel 200 meters rather than waiting every five minutes because incense only does last 30 minutes another tip that not a lot of you guys might not know about is actually location does matter a lot in Pokemon Go if you want to catch a whole bunch of Magikarps to actually evolve them or maybe you want to catch a Squirtle or two to try evolve your Squirtle into a Blastoise then it's probably a good idea to head over to a river lake or reservoir because the chance of actually obtaining water Pokemon right there is a lot higher rather than being in your home so it is a lot better an idea to actually travel to a river lake or reservoir if you are looking to catch some water Pokemon. And if you are trying to catch plant type Pokemon, another good thing is to actually go to the woods. And in the woods, you actually find a lot more plant type Pokemon. Another secret tip is you can actually choose your evolution. So if you would like a Flareon, just go on ahead and rename your EV to Pyro. If you want a Jolteon, rename it to Sparky. And if you want a Vaporeon, then you would just have to rename it to Rainer. And what you would need to be renaming is, of course, the Eevee, and then going on ahead and evolving it. And basically, you will get that Eevee Lucian. Now, this isn't actually a secret tip, but this is more of like an exploit that not a lot of you guys might not know about. But you can actually find out the location of Pokemon using third-party websites and actually teleport to them using some sort of hacked version of Pokemon Go. Now, I have tried out this version myself. And it does really work. You can actually teleport to Pokemon. If you know the location of a Dragonite, you can basically teleport to it. But the thing is, Niantic are going to be putting in bans for people that do use these hacks. So it probably isn't a very smart idea to use the hack. Now, this is a really good gym battle tip. So if you've actually found a gym and you can destroy it and capture it as your own, a really smart idea to capturing it is putting in one of your lowest CP Pokemon. Now, after you have captured the gym and put it in your lowest, lowest CP Pokemon, someone who is a low level can actually capture it. Now this is really good for them because they can capture the gym, but it is actually really good for you because you can capture the gym more easily off them if they are a low level. Sometimes this trick doesn't work because not everyone has really low leveled Pokemon. Then someone with like a 1k CP Vaporeon is going to come in and capture that gym while your highest Pokemon is only at like 500 CP. And I know a lot of you guys might know this trick, but a really good trick to to capturing Pikachu is to actually walk away from the Bulbasaur, Charmander and Squirtle. After you have walked for about five minutes or so, Pikachu will appear and you can actually capture him. If you guys are having trouble throwing curveballs, what you guys can actually do is actually spin the ball around and then wait a little bit and while it is curving really slowly just throw it and then you actually get the XP for a curveball but it won't be as hard to throw because it isn't spinning as fast. And also another quick tip is apparently it does help to actually throw the ball in the opposite direction of the initial spin. So if you are spinning it clockwise, you want to toss the ball over to the left. And another tip to actually obtaining an extra Pokeball is after you have thrown the ball and you have missed, when it bounces or rolls away, you can actually try tapping on it to retrieving it. Now, I don't know if this tip actually works, but I have heard it from a lot of people. Now, that is all I do have for you guys today. I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. Be sure to smash the like button if you did, and subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out, guys.